One of my favorite self-portraits ever made in art history is this one. It was made in 1993. Lucien Freud had just turned 70. You might be thinking that he wasn't very generous with this representation of himself, but that's how he always painted nudes. There's a lack of generosity in the depiction of his subjects. There isn't any idealism. One could call it a cruel honesty. This video will quite surely be demonetized, so if you want to support this channel, please consider checking out patreon.com forward slash the canvas. There's this feature where you can pay annually and get a 10% discount, meaning you can be in the credits at the end of each video for as little as 90 cents per month. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Freud painted his nudes clinically. He was fascinated with animals, and to him, there wasn't much difference between painting an animal and painting a naked body. Perhaps this is why he was so interested in his subject's nakedness. He would even paint his daughters naked. His daughters would later defend these works, saying it would be weirder if their father didn't paint them naked because that would mean that the nudes he made were sexual, which they really aren't. We talked about the sexualization of nudes in a video I made about Egon Schiele, and in this case, I feel like Freud's work is more about honesty than about the sensuality of the human body. Two years after painting his self-portrait, he painted Benefit's supervisor sleeping. This painting, at least to me, is, alongside his self-portrait, one of the most honest nudes in art history. In 2008, it sold for over $33 million, making it the highest paid artwork from a living artist at the time. I'm not surprised by the fact that this artwork has become, in many ways, Freud's most popular and successful painting. But I still want to investigate why this is such a compelling work of art. To do so, I decided to contact and have a conversation with Sue Tilly, the model for this painting. So I first asked who Sue Tilly was before meeting Lucien. I'm a strange person because I'm half one thing and half another. So I had a proper job in the job centre. I've been brought up by nice parents, lovely childhood, you know, no problems really. So I worked in the job centre, but then I also worked in all the London nightclubs at night and met lots of exciting, interesting people and stayed up till three o'clock in the morning, boozing and drinking, and then getting up to go to work at seven. <laughs> I don't do that now so much. And I knew lots of exciting, interest. you know, I did know lots of interesting, exciting people who've all gone on to do fantastic things now. So when it sold, the papers tried to make out I was like a simple soul from the job centre, but I wasn't quite that simple. By the way, I will upload at the same time as this video the full interview on my second channel, Germinal. Sue is a lovely and very funny lady, and I had a great conversation with her. It was a lot of fun. Well, you knew Lee, right? Of course I did, yeah. So that, that hanging out with her is hardly normal, was I? Yeah, exactly. So, like, if you want, can you talk about your, because I feel like the, the, your relationship with Lee was pretty important. Important. I know. I mean, yeah. when I think about it now, I can't believe why he was friends with me because I'm quite regular, normal. Well, that's what I think. And um, I just met him and we just got on really well because we had because he was brought up with a nice family as well and religious background. He didn't really like me working in the job centre. I think he wanted me to have something more glamorous. So he, once he started working for Lucian, he decided that I should work for Lucian as well. So he put the idea into his head. Yeah, yeah, well, that was the first question I want to ask. Um, so, what happened here is the idea of you posing of that of that of that artwork, right? Because when I think of when I think of an artwork, I think the artist is as much as the person who's executing the idea than the person who has the idea, right? Mm -hmm. 
But the person who originally had the idea was neither Lucian or you, right? It no, was Lee. Hey. And why? What? Why? Why is it? He wanted you to work for him. Is that, yeah, is that also because he was working for him? I think he wanted me to experience it as well because it's so interesting, and so he could discuss it with me because we were both going mm-hmm. through the same thing. And through my conversation with Sue, I realized that the intention behind this artwork was a lot less profound than I was frankly hoping for. Lucian didn't come up with the idea of painting Sue. It was Lee. The idea wasn't to subvert the beauty standards or subvert the traditional reclining nude. There wasn't much of an intention aside from that of painting a human body. It's easy to ascribe messages, themes, and ideas to a painting without the artist even thinking about them. We'll discuss this later. Sue witnessed such a critique at an exhibition at the White Chapel Gallery. Yeah, so I went to the, um, it was a big exhibition of Lucian's at the White Chapel Gallery, and it was about to finish, and he'd finally finished my picture, so I just wanted to put in there for the last few days. So I went with a couple of friends, well, three or four friends, I think, and we were there, and the man was standing at the picture talking again, this poor woman. He loves dogs more than her. He threw on the floor. Look at her. She's so ugly, covered in blemishes. It's because he hates women. He made her lie on the floor and all this. And so I piped out. And I started laughing. Just any attention, I laugh. And um, the man went, excuse me, what's the matter? I went, actually, that's me. And you know you want to see someone just wants to die. He wants the <laughs> floor to eat him up. <laughs> But I think I think it's a it's a really great uh, anecdote, a really great story, as you said, folklore. But I think it's because Lucian just like paints a portrait of a woman of of you, and with with no with n- not even from what I understand any like preconceptions, any judgment, nothing, and then people will criticize him for for passing judgment, bypassing themselves their own judgment on that painting. Does that make sense? Yeah, because when it was first going to be in the papers, he said, he said to me, look, Sue, it's going to be in the papers. People probably say some horrible things, but, you know, don't worry about it. And I went, oh, I won't. When I asked Sue if she was ever worried that Lucian wanted to paint her because she was larger or worse to underline her body and make fun of it, she answered. Never crossed my mind. Never. No. <laughs> Never crossed my mind he's trying to make a joke of me. I think he, because he'd been painting Lee, who was big and had a lot of flesh. He was really interested in flesh and how it worked and how it moved as a difference to painting muscles and bones. Most of his paintings haven't got a story at all. They're there for composition and for him to test himself. And that's why it's lots of the people who are in really weird positions. It's not because he wanted them to be uncomfortable, because they're much harder to paint. So he wanted to test himself and move forward and make himself even more talented. And again, looking for a deeper intention. I asked this. But that's the thing, like back, back, I'm going to say back in your day. That movement of body positivity didn't, didn't exist, right? It wasn't much of a thing, I can imagine. What about chubby people body positive, you mean? Yeah. No, not really. Now where people are proud and out to be chubby. Yeah. Well, well, when you, when you posed for Lucian, did you ever think that you could contribute to to maybe you know no. create some kind of proud and and not no. at all it didn't cross your mind at all no sue apologized because she felt like i was disappointed with her answers but on the contrary i was fascinated by them i'm fascinated by the fact that this painting which has captured the public's mind has done it despite the intentions of Lucian, Lee, and Sue. It did so by delving into themes representing them and by defying expectations without perhaps intending to do so. When I showed this painting to people around me who aren't necessarily into art history, it always gets a strong reaction, and this instinctive reaction is at the root of this painting's interest and value. Why does this reaction happen? Well, it's partly because of Sue and partly because of Lucian's depiction of her. But more importantly, I think it says more about us, our way of seeing, our expectations when looking at a painting, when looking at a woman. 
We briefly discussed the sexualization of nudes and, perhaps, the fact that these paintings aren't sexual but may be sexualized by the viewer creates a discomfort. Because of beauty standards and certain expectations socially imposed on women, there may be a discomfort when seeing a nude woman who doesn't abide by these beauty standards. This discomfort says more about us than it does about the model. And I feel like Lucien Freud had to know that. I think he wanted to show reality. There was an honesty, a realness to his nudes, which traditionally was polished over. And reality can be confronting. At the beginning of the video, I said that there's a cruel honesty about Freud's paintings. But there's nothing cruel about his self-portrait or about Sue's portrait. It's just reality. Well, it is an absolute reality, as you'll learn if you watch the full interview with Sue, but it's a lot closer to it than in Bucco's nudes, even though his nudes were praised for how real they felt. By simply depicting reality, a reality we're often blinded to, Freud confronted us with the skewed perspective through which we view the world. It might not have been his intention, perhaps it's what he subconsciously wanted, but in any case, this is the effect his paintings have on us. And to me, this also reveals the importance for viewers like us to interpret paintings, to try to be aware of why we like them, to develop an understanding of them despite the artist's intentions. It can reveal so much about us and our biases. Finding meaning in art can be extremely fulfilling and rewarding. It's why I make these videos, and I hope it's why you watch them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Axel, Roman Brendel, X-Towns, Jonathan, and all my other patrons for supporting the channel. If you also want to help out, leave a like, subscribe, and check out patreon.com forward slash the canvas. Thank you.